Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over five tips for gold making. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so today we're going to be going over five tips for gold making. These are ones that I've jotted down over the last few weeks and just just so you know, it's just random ones that can actually give you a little bit of a head up, heads up when you're actually getting into gold making as well as for existing gold makers, just things as like a reminder, helpful reminder in order to maximize the amount of gold you're doing and to prevent you from doing things that are like detrimental to your gold making. So that being the case, let's move into number one is test before you invest. Now this actually contributes mainly towards flipping. Now this is something that I would like to say I only really do prospecting, milling and or disenchanting for my actual flipping. Uh, all the other different types of flips I mainly stay away from so this is mainly towards those key ones right there. Now when it comes towards flipping I would actually recommend testing the market before you actually invest it's because some of the time the materials if you're doing material flipping some of the prices can fluctuate considerably and you can lose gold on this. Myself has a have made a mistake of doing a mass, like a stupid amount of mass prospecting or, and or milling and actually lost a little bit of gold. So that is something that you guys may want to consider before you're actually doing it. Try and do it in smaller batches when it comes towards your flipping and then go over that every now and then. So what I would recommend is do like a flip of like 20K worth of materials and then increase that incrementally until the mark and see how the market reacts towards that because some of the time you can just be like ah i've just milled like 200 or a thousand um nightshade and i've gained this much back now i can sell this on the auction house that's not going to take a long time to sell those materials will sell relatively fast but then if you actually went ahead and just did a mass mill of like 50,000 uh, nightshade or death blossom or what have you and you invested a considerable amount of gold you have the chance of actually losing gold so that being the case you can actually flood the market with your flips as well so what I would actually recommend is do it in smaller batches for your flipping and also if you do want to do a bigger batch of this this can be in smaller batches as well you can actually hold back some of those materials in order to keep the material base stable enough in order to retain its value. What I mean by this is you could mass prospect like 10,000 ore and then you could only post like 2,000 of that ore on the auction house or from what you actually prospected and then once that's sold through you sell the next load because if you actually flood the market you'll drive the price down because there is more supply than there is demand and therefore the price will drop as a result of that. So that is something you may want to consider moving forward. Coming in at number two is master your markets. Now, I hear this a lot of people, a lot of people actually ask me this on stream and it is mainly just mastering your markets. A lot of people wanna do a lot of the markets and they, what I would recommend is actually being a master of one market. So say you wanted to do all of my top five professions. So you want to do every single one of them at once. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this, I would actually recommend just picking one and then learning how that market actually works and fluctuates first before moving on to the next one and adding more to your gold making potential. This is so you can actually get a general gist on how you actually resupply and also what you can actually do to maximize the amount of gold, i.e. how much you craft per day for your restocking how much are you willing to invest, how are you sourcing the materials, and also where's the best time to post for relatively good sales. I myself know that if I am going to post a load of potions, it's around about seven to nine in the afternoon. This is because I can actually sell pretty much all of those potions in one go by posting it at that time, and that is just due to the fact of me actually testing the market and also just learning how that market works in order to maximize the amount of gold for the effort that I'm putting in. So this one's a short and sweet and simple one, but it's literally just understanding how your market works before you add another one to your roster of gold making routines. 
So that's something that you can do in the future. And at number three is stay consistent. Now, staying consistent can be a bit arduous, but the pure essence of goal making is literally repeatability and consistency. So what I mean by this is if you're going to be doing a profession, you don't do it for just one week. You're going to be doing it for the next couple of months to, in order for a few months more. Now, this is because you're going to be sinking a pretty decent gold investment into your actual profession and it'll be take some time to sell through all of that first load. What you'll be wanting to do if you're wanting to make a gold if you want to make gold in any shape or form, i.e. if that's farming, i.e. professions, it can be a wide variety of different types of farms, but it is staying consistent with what you're actually doing. So if you're gonna be doing material farming, then you do an hour every single day and you list that to the auction house. Remember to variate your farms, obviously. Now, aside from all of that, if it's professions, then you're gonna be wanting to do your restock every single day. This is because you can keep that supply on the auction house and over time, your profit will come back to you for your initial investment. You, what you need to really do in order to make gold is just be staying consistent with what you're actually doing. Now, what I'm saying is you don't have to do this every, every, every single day, but the majority of your days, so you can take the weekend off, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend taking the weekend off. But um, what I would say is, you can actually have some leeway with what you're actually doing, and this comes back to our second one: how your market works. But also staying consistent with what you're actually doing. So if you're going to be selling potions on raid night, and you know that's going to be a good amount of gold, but you like skip like the next couple of raid nights then you're obviously not going to make as much gold as you once would and that is because you're not actually restocking in all that stuff so what i would actually really say is just stay consistent with what you're doing and you'll see the gold coming in more prevalently with farming you will see a higher influx of gold that's because you're putting in time for gold um, for those materials and then you sell that on for gold but it is basically time for gold and with professions it's more or less just staying consistent with your restocking and making sure that you're getting the best deal on your materials in order to actually restock and replenish your supply on the auction house in order to bring in that profit. Aside from all of that, let's move into number four, which is don't expand too fast. Now I got this question quite a lot in my stream the other day and mainly it's due to the fact of you don't wanna jump into too many markets. Now, what I say, say by this is, if you don't have a lot of gold, yeah, and you're, and you, and you want to jump into every single profession and maximize the amount of gold that you're doing, um, it kind of goes back to number two on this list, and that is mastering your market first. But in in essence, you don't want to expand too fast because you don't know how that market will fluctuate. Now, at the beginning of an expansion, most professions will fluctuate in price. This is a standard that happens pretty much every single X-Pack and also patch where material prices will actually fluctuate within price due to the due to changes and or new recipes and a wide variety of different types of variables. Now this is something that I would actually say that you should probably double down on before you actually do uh, do decide to expand and that is by just making sure you know how that market will work and then incrementally get into other markets so you, you it's more manageable otherwise if you jump into every single profession at once not only are you sinking a high amount of investment into that the the thing of note that you will find is you won't be facing a higher risk of losing gold because you don't know how those markets work because you've just jumped into every single one. So what I would say is don't expand too fast but try and do it in increments so you understand what you're actually doing and then you can then adjust yourself for that. So if you see a drop in alchemy you may want to give that a miss until the market returns. Now, aside from that, that is something that you can do in the future. Now, also uh, coming in at last on our list is patience. And I'm I say this at no, uh, and I say this at no surprise. A lot of people want to have their gold like instantly, instantly, instantly. If you want gold really, really fast, and you don't really care about the returns all that much, 
then I'd stick to farming. Now, if you want to go with professions, however, you're gonna need to learn to be patient when it comes towards your selling. Now, that is because some items do vary on how fast they actually sell. They may have good profit potential, but they do take a while to sell, and this can be more prevalent than mounts. Now, some mounts sell faster than others, so like the Jeweled Onyx Panther can have a return of around about 16 to 30,000 gold profit for that, uh, but it doesn't sell all that fast. Now, where, whereas the Mechanist Chopper could sell for like a 10,000 gold profit, but it sells relatively fast. Now, this is something that you can do in order to maximize your amount of gold, but it's something that I would actually recommend um, learning the idea of patience. Um, basically, some things sell faster than others, some things have higher returns, but they sell slower, and it is pretty much just the idea of you're going to need to want to be patient in order to reap the rewards of what you've already done and this goes with crafting the most and then it would be like things like high-end transmog. If anyone's ever farmed up things like the Pendulum of Doom or the Papal Fez, they take a little while in order to sell and it, it can be a bit frustrating because no one's buying your stuff. Now, this will sell, it's just a matter of how patient are you willing to be while doing other gold making routines and also farms and all that stuff. So, I just want to put this one at the last on the list because a lot of people want to have the instant return like almost immediately. For people who want to have like a near instant return, I would recommend raw gold farming or just standardized material farming for current content. Aside from all of that, the rest of them will require you to have a lot of patience um, when it comes towards like crafting and all that stuff in order to see the returns of what you've been doing. And this goes back to staying consistent and then you will see start to see your returns. Patience and consistency will make you gold. As from all of that guys, that is my five tips for gold makers. Have a lovely rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.